Good morning and welcome. The goal of today's presentation is to provide you with a few simple guidelines to assist you with the selecting the right motion control solution for your application. Today's discussion will focus specifically on stepper and servo control. Today's agenda, we will start with how do we make the right choice. Uh, first and foremost, comparing performance, specifically the speed torque curves of both a stepper and a servo. And then we'll look at how do we make the right choice when looking at features. Um, there's going to be specific features provided by each control solution, whether it be closed loop for a servo or open loop in a stepper, that will help us make a decision and may provide one choice being better than the other for a particular application. Then we will look at a couple of applications, review their requirements, go through the listing of features required, and make decisions specifically for that application on which motion control solution would be the right choice. And then we will look at a few takeaways which will help us give us some guidelines on exactly which motion control solution would fit better in a particular application. And then if there's any questions, I will answer them at that time. Step or servo, selecting the right motor. When you start a motion application, do you select the motor based on design criteria or habit? Do you say to yourself, well, we always use a servo, so we'll use a servo for this application as well because I'm familiar with it and know how to program it. Or it needs to be low cost, so let's use a stepper because I know a stepper is going to be a lower cost solution than a servo. What you should be asking is, what is the load I need to move? Specifically, what is the torque requirement of the motor? What are the speeds I need to run at? Is it a low speed application, 2, 300, 400 RPM? Or is it a high speed application, somewhere in the neighborhood of 2,000 RPM or above? That will help guide me to one control solution over the other. Does my load vary throughout the move? Is dynamic torque something required for this particular application? If so, that may uh, provide me with a direction on which control solution I need to select. Are there any special functions I need? Do I need torque limiting or current limiting? Do I need holding torque at rest? These are a couple of functions that each control solution can offer and will again provide some guideposts on which selection is the right one. Do I need AC power or DC power? Is that AC power 120, 230 volt? Or am I looking at 24, 48 volt DC? Again, what is available in those particular power requirements and those particular power offerings? And then lastly, but not least, is what is my budget? Um, I may be shooting for the moon as far as my control requirements, but if I have a small budget, I may need to rein in what those functions and what those requirements are or what my goals are and make the decision based upon what exactly I can afford. Motor performance. It is often assumed servo motors outperform steppers of equivalent size. But if we look at the general speed torque curves of the two motors below, we can see that a stepper motor and a servo motor actually have very similar performances at speeds up to and around 1,000 RPM and above. What this means is, and for those of us who are very familiar with servos and, and veer away from using steppers because we think their performance is a lot less than we get from a servo, we can see from the speed torque curve that if my operating speed is somewhere in the neighborhood of 1500 RPM or below, a stepper motor can actually be a pretty good fit and shouldn't be something that's avoided for a particular application. Likewise, if my speed is above 1500 RPM, I probably want to stay away from using a stepper because as the speed increases, the torque output of the motor decreases uh, of a stepper motor. And therefore, my torque is going to suffer as I start to get into higher and higher speeds. Uh, and that threshold crossover point between a stepper and a servo of similar motor sizes occurs somewhere in the neighborhood of 1,200 to 1,500 RPM. Again, if I have a speed of around 1,200 RPM or less, both motors are a very good option. Uh, anything above 1,500 RPM, I probably want to stick around and focus on using a servo for that type of application. Um, 
this drop off that you see here specific to a stepper motor um, is a little bit more severe when we look at a DC application but um, for this particular speed torque curve we're going to be focusing on uh, AC motors. Then we also want to look at concerning the features and functions. As we know the motors are controlled quite differently when comparing a stepper to a servo. A stepper motor runs open loop whereas a servo runs closed loop. Um, when we review our application, we need to determine if one control mechanism provides features that set it apart from the other. Uh, first and foremost is going to be position feedback. Because a servo runs closed loop, position feedback is a requirement. With a stepper motor, although it's open loop, I can get encoder feedback, although it's not a requirement. The holding torque, which means do I have any torque at rest, when the motor is at zero position. With a servo motor, there is no holding torque. Uh, with a stepper, we do have holding torque. Uh, that holding torque can be regulated by the amount of current we put through the motor at rest. Uh, we call that idle current. Uh, at 100% idle current, we can expect full torque from the motor. Uh, we can reduce the current going through the motor at rest, which helps reduce motor heating, but would also reduce our uh, holding torque. So that's something we need to consider uh, when looking at our application. Another thing we want to consider is torque control. Uh, with a servo motor, uh, the current control is a lot more complex than we get with a stepper, which means we can regulate the current going through the motor at speed, which also will help regulate the torque output. So if my motor is rated at, say, uh, 3 newton meters with a servo motor at full current, I can tell the control solution to put only a specific amount of current, whether it be one-third or one-half the current, of the motor when it's running, which would help regulate the torque, meaning I would get reduced torque out at that particular speed. But also I may have an application where I want to manage the torque and make sure I don't go above a certain value, so this would be a very good fit uh, using a servo for that type of application. Uh, with a stepper, because it is current uh, open loop, um, there is really no way to control the current uh, during the motor uh, running, so we would have full torque uh, when the motor is running, so it's a lot harder to regulate torque with a stepper than it is with a servo. Um, there is tuning required with a servo because it is closed loop, and that tuning can make the control a lot more complex. So if I have loads that are running very slow speeds, um, a lot of oscillation may occur if I don't have proper tuning. With a stepper, I don't have tuning, and therefore it's a lot more simpler control. Uh, a servo can support dynamic loads, meaning if for some reason uh, my expected load changes, I go above my expected load, the servo can output what's called peak torque or peak current to increase the amount of torque output by that motor for a very brief moment of time and overcome those changes in load that may or may not have been expected, whereas a stepper cannot provide that type of control. Uh, with a servo, we have good load speed smoothness, but with a stepper, because of features such as micro-stepping, we can have very excellent low speed smoothness because we don't end up with the hunting or the uh, modifications that the tuning, as I talked about earlier, can cause uh, when we're running at very low speeds. Uh, with a servo, we have a much higher cost with a servo, specifically at the same size motor and torque output than we do with a stepper. So let's look at our first application. Uh, in this application, we're talking about automated adjustment. Uh, this particular application, uh, the manufacturer is looking to automate roller setup, but the same type of guidelines could be expected when doing something such as uh, rail guide adjustments, um, platen adjustments on printing heads, so on and so forth. The goal here is to reduce change over time and increase repeatability between various production setups. For this application, we're obviously going to be running low speed because it's a setup uh, a changeover. And in those kind of types of applications, we've got other things going on during the setup operation, and therefore speed isn't critical. Uh, in this application, both servo and stepper will execute the application, but the stepper will give us a little bit better smoothness. We can control both of these uh, axes or both of these uh, control solutions using our PLC. Because our PLC is the main control for the machine, we want to integrate that changeover into the PLC, and we want to make sure that the control solution we select can integrate into the PLC uh, smoothly and seamlessly. Uh, we would like to have holding torque, 
because as the product is moving through the rollers, there may be some variation, which means there's changes in force on those rollers. Um, with a servo, what we may end up with, if there's any sort of variation in thickness as the product goes through the rollers, is we get some variation of force as that servo is hunting around that resting point. Uh, whereas with a stepper, we have holding torque, um, and it can handle those variations in thickness and variations in pressure by just sitting there at rest. Uh, and obviously, for this particular application, the servo is going to be higher cost than a stepper because the servo requires a little bit more sophisticated control and does require position feedback that we may not be required to include when selecting a stepper. So for this application, a stepper would be a better fit than with a servo. Our second application we're going to look at is a bottle capper. In this application, an OEM builder of filling and bottling lines needs a linear actuator as part of an update to a capping operation. The goal for this particular application is to place the caps accurately and also to report any miss, missing or misapplied caps. And what we want to do is look at, is there any way we can select a motor control type that can assist us with uh, that monitoring of the cap placement without the need of extra sensors such as photo eyes or something of that nature. Um, because we're using a linear actuator, we can get precise positioning whether we're using both a servo or a stepper. Like with the other application, we want PLC control, and both the servo and the stepper can provide that. Um, but one thing that we're going to look at doing is using force monitoring. Um, because if the cap is misapplied or missing, we're going to get a variation in force than we would when a, when a cap is placed correctly. With a misapplied cap, we may get, um, may, uh, get a situation where the motor is required to output a little bit more current than expected with a normal cap. Or if the cap is missing, we'd have less current because there's a lot less force being applied by the servo. Whereas with a stepper, there's no ability to monitor the current or regulate the current going to the motor, and therefore to do force monitoring or cap placement monitoring, we would have to do add a couple of photo eyes or something downstream to do that cap placement, which would add complexity or cost to the system. Um, the customer is also concerned about uh, bottling speeds. Some applications, they need to have uh, the bottle cap placed uh, at rates of five inches per second to maintain bottling speeds. Um, and with the stepper, we'd only be able to achieve about a two inch per second application speed. So therefore, we may want to, with this application, obviously focus on using a servo because it allows us to achieve the machine speeds and also do the force monitoring that we'd like to do, which would eliminate the need for extra hardware downline for monitoring cap placement. So some takeaways here. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, stepper systems. Some advantages of using a stepper system uh, is simple design control, uh, excellent low speed torque and excellent low speed smoothness, and obviously lower, lower overall system cost. So if we have applications where uh, simple design is a focus, you know, whether we're using um, a PLC instead of a PAC, uh, we would maybe want to look at using a stepper for those types of applications. Uh, low speed, anything under 1,000 RPM, we'd probably want to focus on using a stepper. Uh, and when budget is certainly a driving force, the stepper would be a, a, a main uh, control solution to look at for these types of applications. Uh, some disadvantages when we're looking at using the stepper and things you want to consider is torque decreases as a function of speed. So if we have an application where our speeds are above 1,200, 1,500 RPM, we probably really want to take a really strong look at using um, servos for those types of applications because um, of that drop off in torque that, that we see uh, when using steppers. And the constant current, regardless of uh, requirement of the motor, because it does run open loop when I set the current to four amps, it's going to try and output four amps to that motor regardless of the force requirements. Um, we can do some things to uh, regulate that, uh, but um, it is going to be a, a constant feature of the stepper, meaning that constant current device. Uh, and then as there's no uh, method to overcome position loss. Uh, we can overcome that because a lot of times nowadays steppers will include encoders, 
but at a, at a main control solution with a stepper, encoders are not there, and therefore if we have position loss or stalling, we may have no method to monitor that. Uh, with a servo system, the advantages uh, would be for a very complex solution, we have closed loop control, which may allow us to do things like coordinate motion among several axes. That's at higher torque, at higher speed. Uh, the expected torque that we get from the servo can be achieved at speeds well above 3,000 RPM. So for high speed applications, servos would be the right choice. Uh, they're very efficient. There's much, uh, they're a lower motor heating than we would see with a stepper. And they're a better choice for variable load systems. Uh, because of the ability to use peak torque and peak current with a servo, variable loads can be overcome and also very high accelerations can be achieved using a servo than we can see with a stepper system. Uh, the disadvantages are it's a much more complex control. Uh, tuning can be an issue. You know, if I have a low speed application, I can't run it at a higher speed uh, because tuning requirements, the tuning is often done at the expected operating speeds of the motor. So if I tune it at high speeds, my performance may be uh, suffering at low speeds for that same tuning system. Position feedback is required, which does increase cost, which leads to a higher overall system cost, not only because of the uh, feedback requirement, but the cabling uh, required for that encoder and the other parts of the uh, servo system can lead to a ho higher overall system cost. So selecting the right product. Uh, consider using a stepper when your application meets one of these requirements. High torque, low speed, short, rapid, repetitive moves, say like a cutting application or a labeling application. A uh, simple control is desired. Uh, low speed, high accuracy, because of micro-stepping we can get high accuracy at low speeds. Uh, benefits of the stepper, uh, it's rugged construction. Uh, it's a high reliability means there's no or very low maintenance when using a stepper control solution. No system, system tuning means it's a much simpler design and uh, any sort of replacements can be done uh, in the field without having to go through uh, major control tuning. And it does mean it does have lower system cost. Some considerations when using a stepper solution is torque decreases as a function of speed. This can be improved by using AC powered over a DC powered solution but it is something that um, at high speeds, again, over 1500 RPM, we just simply can't overcome. Current setting of drive is continuous current. Uh, we can use features such as idle current, which I discussed earlier, to reduce motor heating um, when the motor is at rest. And some stepper systems do have hybrid motion, which is designed to improve performance, which will act a little bit like a, a servo, where it can reduce current when the motor is running relative to force requirement. And if a system is sized improperly, there's no feedback to detect motor stall. And as I discussed earlier, encoders can be added to a stepper system to improve this to monitor uh, system stall and uh, other types of issues that can be uh, introduced when sizing is done improperly. That closes our presentation for today. So if we have any questions, I'd certainly be happy to take those offline and answer them at your convenience. Thank you. Have a good day and we'll see you for our next presentation.